And dear brothers and sisters, we'd like to continue, inshallah, and we have some announcement. So please tell everybody tonight uh, at nine o'clock, uh, there are uh, many brothers, inshallah, from Riverside community, uh, led by uh, Brother Shaquille Ali, Dr. Sadr al and the rest of the board members. They will be, uh, inshallah, talking with the brother Hussam Ailush. Hussam Ailush will be with us, inshallah, and I will be there, inshallah, to uh, see how we can generate good deeds in the month of Ramadan, how we can uh, take care of our Islamic center and keep going and survive until, inshallah, this calamity is clear from, from our life. So please join us. Tell your friends, at least tell one or two people and join us, inshallah. So uh, dear brothers and sisters, we stopped at uh, chapter nine last time and uh, we said we, uh, I'm sorry, we finished chapter eight and we're going to start chapter nine and we make the introduction about Surah Al-A'raf and what's the story about Al-A'raf. So uh, let me just recite a few verses also from Surah Al-A'raf uh, to explain uh, a subject that is important and then we go to Surah Al-Anfal uh, toward the end of, surah, of chapter nine. Uh, first, uh, the subject that is going on maybe lately a little more uh, like uh, more than average uh, is the end of time, uh, the day of judgment. What's going to happen? Are we coming to the end of time or the end of judgment uh, because of this virus or because of some uh, natural phenomenon or what's happening around us in this world? And some people are like, you know, so scared, uh, especially, you know, even like, uh, let me say, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims. So what's the story here? No doubt that this uh, is secret that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will not tell anybody about it, but uh, he will announce it and it will come. And we know there is like uh, a uh, signs that comes at the end of time. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about it. Then let me just uh, recite a few verses uh, regarding that and we'll go over it inshallah uh, as we go on. Uh, that will be uh, verse number 187, 187 of uh, Surat Al-A'raf. <laughs> قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي لَا يُجَلِّيهَا لِوَقْتِهَا إِلَّا هُوَ ثَقُلَتْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا تَأْتِيكُمْ إِلَّا بَغْتَةِ يَسْأَلُونَكَ كَأَنَّكَ حَفِيٌّ عَنْهَا قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي نَفْعًا وَلَا ضَرًّا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَاسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنِيَ السُّوءِ إِنْ أَنَا إِلَّا نَذِيرٌ وَبَشِيرٌ لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ وهو الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وجعل منها زوجها ليسكن إليها فلما تغشاها حملت حملا خفيفا فمرت به فلما أثقل الدعوى الله ربهما لئن آتيتنا صالحا لنكونن من الشاكرين فلما آتاهما صالحا جعلا له شركاء فيما آتاهما فتعالى الله عما يشركون أيشركون ما لا يخلق شيئا وهم يخلقون ولا يستطيعون لهم نصرا ولا أنفسهم ينصرون uh, dear brothers and sisters, the ayat of Surah Al-A'raf, as we said, starting from 187, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that people asking you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asking you about the end of time, about as when the end of time will come. 
ayyana mursaha when it will be settled when it will be arriving or coming qul inma ilmuha indallah in fact the full knowledge of the end of time is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all speculations and all calculations and everybody like uh, projections is not but a human effort that is not worth anything other than what rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about the small sign and the early sign or the big sign other than that we could not take from anybody uh, any phenomena or an event to be the end of time and uh, i am i am totally against this uh, mentality of talking about the end of time and maybe spreading the sentiment of desperation of yes or as if everything coming to end why i should do why i should work why i should uh, let's say develop why i should plant why i should this and that this is not a good mentality dear brother and sister and not an islamic to start with even to the contrary rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam told sayyidina ali radiyallahu anhu in the very well known hadith that even if you uh, the time comes the end of time comes and you have a plant in your hand and you want to put it in the ground uh, like i did today and that's why i'm so thirsty i did what they wouldn't plant and by the time i if we finish you get thirsty uh you put it even if tomorrow is the end of time so you put that with the intention that it will come and will be fruitful so let alone the fact that we are not in in the uh, stage of those great signs that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about them qul inna ma ilmuha inda rabbi the ultimate knowledge of the day of judgment is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yujalliha liwaqtiha illa huwa nobody can really tell about it full knowledge except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will come on the time that allah predetermined that it is the end of time thaqulat fi as-samawat wal ard la ta'tikum illa baghta thaqulat fi as-samawat wal ard that is a concern of the people of heaven and the people in this earth which is the angels also care about that and in fact we know the hadith that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam He said that the israfil one of the angels of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that who will blow the horn to tell of the coming of the end of time is ready he already grabbed his horn and he is like prepared but how long it's going to be and when nobody knows as we said but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will come in a way sudden so we don't really need to worry about it if it comes any time then alhamdulillah we are ready Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yas'alunaka ka'annaka hafiyun anha they ask you as if you are aware of it or you know more about it now Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may know but he is not permitted to tell such things that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him permission or he does not really know more than what Allah told him and he told us so qul inna ma ilmuha indallah the ultimate knowledge as we said ilmuha indallah walakin akthar an-nas la ya'lamun so most people they don't know it is up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore dear brothers and sisters whether it is covid 19 or any other calamity or phenomena in this world or any other maybe uh, i don't know what could happen tomorrow that is not necessarily the end of time that is not necessarily where we have to stop doing all the good deeds that we are doing inshallah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling us that qul la amliku rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam telling uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to tell us that he muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not own himself nor any benefit or harm qul la amliku li nafsi naf'an wa la dharran illa ma sha allah except what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have predetermined and empowered him to say or to do and you know the story of surah uh, al-kahf when uh, the uh, delegation from the jewish community they came to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked him about ahlul kahf and he said okay come tomorrow i will let you know and tomorrow he thought that jibril alayhi salam will come what did he forget he forget to say insha allah if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
otherwise he doesn't have will of his own sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he does not have that benefit nor he have harm to harm anybody but by the will of Allah he said قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي نَفْعًا وَلَا ضَرًّا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ if I know the unknown and the unforeseen لَسْتَكْثَرْتُ لست مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنِي السُّوءِ then I will do so much good and I will uh, avoid all harms. Rasul Sallallahu was hungry. Rasul Sallallahu was scared at certain time. Rasul Sallallahu get sick as well. He was like concerned about the Ummah and so on and so forth. Any like any other human being. So if that's the truth that Rasul Sallallahu Wasallam is as such, then of course the rest of the people, even Sahaba and forward, downward, let's say until nowadays, they will not know more than the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding that. So we cannot take it from any, anybody that he will speculate, nor we have to take anything regarding harm or benefit. That Sheikh so-and-so, Mawlana so-and-so, Arif Billah so-and-so. Now, I admit that there are people who have knowledge and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala grant them peace and vision and understanding and maybe some inspiration as like to, to read the situations and so forth based on knowledge, but nothing else. Those are people, they don't know al-ghayb, the unknown, and al-kahana. Al-kahana is to go to somebody and believe what he said because he have some like uh, knowledge or ways to know what's going to happen tomorrow or any, any time in the future. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, that the rule of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in ana, in ana illa nadheerun wa bashirun liqawmi yu'minun. I am a, a person with good news as well as bad news for those people who will believe. So if they believe, then they will have a good news, bashir. If they don't believe, then they have the bad news, nadheer. And nadheer is the opposite of bashir, of like telling the good news, and the bad news and we have brother uh, Bashar with us uh, mashallah Bashar Bashir is the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us all from one soul and created for us our spouses and when we have those babies mashallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us that we make dua to whom we make dua for Allah and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send us a salih a boy or a girl that is salih and then we will be thankful. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us or blessed us with children, sometimes Allah said, جَعَلَ لَهُ شُرَكَاءَ فِي مَا آتَاهُمَا فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ عَمَّا يَشْرِكُونَ So here the theme is the same, still the same, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with so many things. It is due to Him. All the, 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 uh, uh, the gratitude, should be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody else. Uh, not to Imam, not to Sheikh, not to any. Uh, yes, you can do the hasanat, you make the dua, you make the sadaqah, you do all the good deeds, the prayers, the dua, as we said. But uh, no one can do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing in creating that baby and blessing you with the baby. So you have to be thankful and shakir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to anybody of, uh, other, of uh, other than Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was wondering here, يُشْرِكُونَ مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ They are committing shirk and association with Allah in terms of effect. That, oh, we went to Mawlana so-and-so, we slaughter a cow over there, and then we have a baby boy, and that's why. That completely, you know, will be considered as a shirk, and out of the uh, uh, norm of the Tawheed that you did uh, associate that whoever even dead, not even alive, to uh, have influence and effect and produce things other, nobody can produce but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody can give you other than Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, the ayat continue to uh, conclude Surah Al-A'raf Al-Sujood إن الذين عند ربك لا يستكبرون عن عبادته ويسبحون له ويسبحونه وله يسجدون سبحان الله العظيم. so the theme of the ayat and the theme of the whole surah is تسبيح and توحيد to Allah. 
إن الذين عند ربك that is الملائكة all ملائكة of Allah you know what their best duties and what they do like the most in their life سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر that يسبحون الله حاميم تنزيل الكتاب ذلك عالم الغيب عالم الغيب والشهادة الآيات the آيات في سورة غافر toward the end that الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله those who are carrying the throne of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and all the angels around it يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويستغفرون الذين آمنوا they make استغفار for the believers but their main duty is تسبيح to Allah and here إن الذين عند ربك لا يستكبرون عن عبادته they will are they are humble they have no bad feeling toward عبادة الله سبحانه وتعالى ويسبحونه وله يسجدون and they perform sujood all the time dear brothers and sisters سورة الأعراف as we said like every chapter is كري has so many beautiful ayat and meanings. I try to emphasize uh, the aspect of Tawheed and Iman as much as possible in the previous uh, chapter, alhamdulillah. Uh, then we start, dear brother and sister, with Surah Al-Anfal. And Surah Al-Anfal, uh, where like three pages and then uh, the chapter end of chapter nine, Surah Al-Anfal, dear brother and sister, comes after which ghazwa? Everybody knows? It is after Badr. The Battle of Badr was a turning point, turning point for the Muslim community. And in fact, for whole humanity. Because at that time, give the sign that yes, the believers, even though they are small and they are few and they are like weak, far away, yet they can achieve victory and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will uh, make them successful. So let me start with a few verses. Uh, so let me, let me define the meanings al anfal after the battle of uh, uh, Badr, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant victory to the believers and a thousand, one thousand of the mushrikeen of Mecca turned away and were defeated and 70 plus of them were killed and just a few sahaba were killed, radiyallahu anhum, shuhada. And then the mushrikeen have left a lot of uh, booty of the war. They left a lot of... Uh, like war uh, salvage things, you know, horses, maybe camels, maybe swords, maybe uh, vests, and so on and so forth. And the believers collected all of those, the Qaddani of the Prophet ﷺ, and then, of course, whatever left from the battle, they collected to bring it back. This is called Al-Anfal. Al-Anfal is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given the Prophet ﷺ after the war. Now, whether it is a, a uh, military uh, equipment or it is maybe uh, products or land or maybe fruits or whatever it is gain from the war, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, telling us about the human nature and what's happened during that time. Uh, so this is the uh, meaning of al-anfal, the remains of the war that the fighters can gain and get back from the war. So let me just start, inshallah, briefly uh, to recite the first page or so maybe and until uh, uh, page number, uh, I mean verse number 10 and then we'll continue, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yasalunaka anil anfal qulil anfal lillahi war rasul. Fattaku allaha wa aslihu dhata baynikum wa ati'u allaha wa rasulahu in kuntum mu'mineen. إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يؤمنون بالغيب الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين لكارهون يجادلونك في الحق بعدما تبينك أنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون 
وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى الطائفتين أنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون إذ تستغيثون ربكم فاستجاب لكم أني ممدكم بألف من الملائكة مردفين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى ولتطمئن به قلوبكم وما النصر إلا من عند الله إن الله عزيز حكيم آمنت الله صدق الله Those are ten verses, dear brother and sister, beginning of Surah Al-Anfal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that they ask you about the Al-Anfal. Who will take what? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, knows some of the people, you know, what they are about. Allah knows all the people, of course, but some of those who were even fighting, they have in their mind after they finish the battle, the gains of this dunya. So they are still human beings. And in that regard, maybe it's a, a kind of strange to imagine that people fighting, putting their life for the love of Allah with Rasulullah for the deen. And yet, after the battle, they are thinking of the dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, hold your horses, don't rush. It's not like, you know, because you were in the battle, then you deserve this and that. Not necessarily. Uh, however, he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلِ الْأَنْفَالُ لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ It is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who grant you victory and to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who led you in this battle. فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Fear Allah and be careful. Be careful what you have in your heart. It is not a, the dunya only. وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ Mend the situation between you, each other. Fix your relationship between each other. And don't become like an enemy or have animosity against each other. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Those are the priorities in every action you do, you do or you take. The action you take is not to think about the dunya. You should think about Alhamdulillah, who is alive and who is shaheed. And shaheed will take care of him and his family and so on. And who is ever alive, Allah bless him, mashallah, may Allah accept his jihad. اتقوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله إن كنتم مؤمنين إنما المؤمنون The true believers, they don't think and ask about gain. Really, it is not about gain, especially when it comes to matter of deen. You know, I, I rarely saw any imam or khatib or even da'iyah or maybe uh, directors or what have you, a millionaire. It's not going to happen. It is if they survive decently, it will be good. Because after all, people are not willing to pay for the religion. That's our problem. That's another subject. On the other hand, you know, uh, the, the, the affair of the deen always be coming in our life at the last. You should be zahid. You should be giving up. You should wear any, any clothing, drive any cars, do this and do that, and maybe just eat and drink and jazakallah khair. And that's where we are. We are here because we don't have all what it takes to raise the ummah, inshallah. That's another subject. Maybe we'll talk about it another time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The true believers are, إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, their heart will be trembled. They will have fear of Allah. They will love to be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا When the words of Allah and ayat of Allah is being recited and mentioned, their iman will increase. Dear brother and sister, honest to God, and Allah is my witness. Now only, not only because of Ramadan and we are fasting, alhamdulillah, but when I sit with you here, even two or three or five brothers, and reading the Quran, I feel like this is my hour for the day. Iman, we feel like, you know, alhamdulillah, we are reading the Quran, we are making salah ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are talking to each other, the Iman will increase. Zadathum imana. 
وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they depend on Allah after all. Some of their characteristics, and that's all of us, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ Those who establish the prayers and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they always think about when is Zuhr, when is Asr, when is Mughrib, when is Isa, and they pray on time as much as possible. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They spend for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because dear brother and sister, it is not only words as much as it's important, but it is action. And part of the action is to be able to reach your pocket. That we are our challenge. Our challenge, we always can talk, but to act by moving your hand to your bucket and putting something fi sabilillah, that is mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon. From what we have provided for them, they will spend for the love of Allah. Ulaika humul mu'minoon haqqa. Those are the true believers. Those are the one who like support their words with action and with love and fear of Allah. And those are lahum darajatun inda rabbihim wa maghfiratun wa rizqun kareem. They will have high rank in Jannah and maghfirah, forgiveness insha'Allah. Like Dr. Imad talked about the maghfirah today after the tawbah. No matter how many sin, how many times, it may be less of effect, but do not forget that Allah grant the tawbah and Allah grant the maghfirah always. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us later on about the battle of Al-Anfal that كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين لكارهون then some people maybe they have some doubt about this battle and they maybe they will be killed or defeated and you can just imagine that war is not a joke it's life that will be wasted and, and it is you know life is precious for everybody and that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said no we have to face sometimes the hardship. We have to uh, be the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to defeat the uh, enemies of Allah and those who are against Islam and Muslims. In any way, forms or shape, you have to be standing, taking position. Uh, so Sahaba radiallahu anhu, when they went with the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the battle of uh, Badr, they did not go for war. They went to uh, catch the caravan that's coming from um, Syria, from Damascus, from Bilad al-Sham. For uh, Abu Sufyan, who was coming with the uh, money and products and uh, camels and everything toward Mecca, they felt that they have the right to uh, take that because they left everything back in Mecca and their homes and their property. So they have the right to take it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, get them out. And they were about 300, they said 13 of the Sahaba or 17. And they were ready just for that. Minimal like equipment and uh, fighting uh, maybe swords and horses and camels, just a few of those. And then it happened that they, you know, long story, I don't want to go on there. Uh, they happened to meet the Mushrikeen, about thousand armed men coming from Mecca to wipe out Rasulullah and the believers in the area where it's called uh, Badr. Badr is really a location southwest of Medina. And uh, at that time was uh, advised by one of the companions to Rasulullah to go to that site where there is some uh, water where the Muslims, Muslims can drink, the other, the Mushrikeen, they then don't have access to water. And the rest of the story continue, and there is so much to say about that. So the point here, dear brothers and sisters, that some of those companions who have all that sacrifice, they still have interest in thinking about the dunya. You may say, but nothing wrong with that. That's true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said later on that one-fifth of all this gain will go to Rasulullah Sallallahu and his household. Uh, and then the rest of it will go to the uh, companion and to the fighters and those who fought with the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, the ayat continued, your brothers and sisters, in Surah uh, Al-Anfal to tell us about 
so many situation that the main point of it, the main point of it, ليحق الحق ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون. So the حق and the truth has to be so obvious, so clear cut. And, and even the Mujrimeen, the criminals, and those anti-Islamic, and those anti-humanity, and so forth, they have to come to the point that if they are in any way fair, uh, and they have like fair mind, they will see that, oh, okay, Muslims did not do anything wrong. And they are like helpful, supportive, and uh, integrated part of the society, etc., etc. And especially I'm talking about nowadays. Uh, as you know, whether this calamity or uh, even uh, all kind of hurricanes and all kind of calamity that's hit the country in different places, Muslims are in the front, helping uh, in charity, in uh, nowadays like medication, uh, doctors who are putting their life on the line, uh, financially uh, as much as we can, uh, uh, keeping the peace or whatever else that Muslims can do as part of the society. Of course, because we are interested, after all, in showing our side, our true side, our true face, not the face that the uh, enemies like portrayed as, as who we are. Now we are, as we are, alhamdulillah, educated, capable, uh, to a certain point organized and willing to and helpful and we have values and we have traditions and we have religion and we are no doubt peaceful and we have our integrity and so on and so forth. Now again, you may say, oh, not all Muslims like that. Okay, that's true. It's not all Muslims like that. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about even some of the Sahaba, they are thinking about the dunya. But the majority of the people and the most that counted to be is like that. And that's what we have to be considering ourselves, inshallah. Uh, in addition, and finally, inshallah, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said in, uh, let me just tell you in verse number 41, so this is the ayah I was looking for. It's number 41, which is one-fifth of what you gain goes to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his household. And the uh, rest is for the fuqara, masakin, aytam, and of course, the people who fought the war, they will be compensated and they will be granted. Now, uh, that, uh, we are not talking here about war, of course, in case of calamity, whether it's in the United States or anywhere else. Muslims and Islamic organizations and, and charities and so forth, they are helping people, uh, in fact, and supporting uh, uh, the needy and the poor. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, this is uh, the conclusion of chapter 9, and we are, inshallah, in the beginning of chapter 10, which is the rest of Surah Al-Anfal and beginning of Surah Bara'a or At-Tawbah. At tawbah or Bara'a, and inshallah, we'll cover uh, that when we come back again tomorrow, inshallah. So let me make just announcement and leave a few minutes for discussion. Uh, the announcement, dear brothers and sisters, please, uh, we are about 10 people here. Let's tell another 10 people, minimum, uh, tonight to join us uh, from 9, uh, 9 o'clock, inshallah. Uh, Brother Hussam Ailu should be with us, and inshallah, all of you will be with us, and we will talk about the uh, Islamic Center affair. Uh, uh, to continue our services and to see uh, what is the production more or less and to try to collect some fund if possible to continue our services to the community and inshallah to uh, face all those challenges and see how we can inshallah survive uh, for the next month or so maybe more and uh, to talk more about uh, our affair May Allah bless you all. I think uh, it's a good time to stop here and see if anybody have any comment, question, concern, uh, anything that you'd like to add.